So before I show you how to build a Xi'an, I want to briefly talk about terminology and the function of the Xi'an. So here's the Xi'an that we'll be replacing, and hmm, it's a bit small and fiddly. Hold on a second. Yeah, here we go. I just happen to have this base Xi'an lying around. That's much easier to demonstrate things with. So this is a Xi'an. The French term literally means dog, because it supposedly looks like a dog. I can't really see the resemblance myself. Uh, the best English term I can think of is buzzing bridge, but that's a little unwieldy, so I prefer to use Xi'an. Personally, my favorite term for it is uh, the German word Schnarre, but not many people other than Germans know that, so I tend to avoid it. We'll refer to it as a Xi'an for this video. So the Xi'an has various different features. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes, but common to all of them will be a foot, which taps against the soundboard or tapping plate, a slot for the string to sit in, a heel, which is the line along which the whole, the whole thing tilts, and a tail, which is what fits into the slot which carries the Xi'an. In order for the Xi'an to function correctly, the tail needs to fit snugly into the slot, but without rubbing against it too much. That will impede the function of the Xi'an. And it's also very important that the corners here mate snugly with the outside of the slot holding the Xi'an. I'll show you that later when we're fitting the Xi'an we're building. The other feature necessary for Xi'ans to function correctly is that the foot and the heel be coplanar and that this angle here allows the, the Xi'an to tilt cleanly along the line of the heel. I've seen several instruments where the builder apparently forgot to cut this angle away, which prevented the Xi'an from being able to tilt and prevented the Xi'an from functioning. I'll tilt it on its side so you can get an idea of what they look like from the top. This is just my design. There are various different ways you can profile the sides and profile the inside corner and have different foot angles and all kinds of things. You don't need any particularly special tools or materials for building Xi'ans. I'm making them out of maple, although you can really use any hardwood. I'm using quarter sawn maple here to get the nice grain patterns on the sides and to match the melody string bridge, but as in my experience, it really, doesn't really matter that much. The grain orientation can be however you want. You'll need a fine saw for making cuts in the wood, something for making right angles, something for measuring and marking, a few chisels, a few knives, a few small files, and a mechanical pencil. It's also very useful to have one of these bench dogs for sawing against. We're going to start by carving the tail of the Xi'an. So we need to measure the slot that it fits into. That comes to just over two millimeters. I make that 2.2 millimeters. Now we know we want to mark out a 2.2 millimeter tail on our nine millimeter wide maple. We need to set our vernier calipers to nine millimeters minus 2.2 is 6.8 divided by two is 3.4. So we set our vernier calipers to 3.4, like that, lock them off, take our piece of maple, these are going to be the sides, this is going to be the top. So we'll drag along there like that, and on the other side, and now we know we have a 2.2 millimeter tail marked out. We need to mark it out on the end as well, like that, and it doesn't hurt to mark it on the bottom, although it's not entirely necessary there and we can make this marking a bit clearer by filling in the lines with a little pencil mark. So now that we've got our 2.2 millimeter tail marked out on our blank, uh, we can mark out the rest of the dimensions. Now here I have the, the Xi'an that I'm replacing. This is an old one, which doesn't work with the new wheel on the instrument that I'm, that I'm setting up. And we can take some of the reference dimensions from this. So we can have a look at the the tail, for example, which looks to be about four millimeters long. So I'll mark out five on the new blank because it's easier to make the tail shorter than longer. Uh, from the heel to the, to the front, looks like it's about 14. So I'll make that 15, maybe, maybe 16. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mark out 16. That was a five millimeter tail there. We mark out, so again, this is the top. This is the side and the bottom. So we mark out the tail now on the, uh, the, uh, the heel rather, on the side 
along the bottom and then on the bottom of the other side and put a little pencil mark so that you don't lose track of it. Now I want the shoulder to be about six millimeters forward from the heel. Uh, so that gives us 11 millimeters from the back. So we set the calipers to 11, mark out here, mark along the top this time because the shoulders are a feature on the top and on the other side. And again, fill in the marks with some pencil. We'll set the calipers to 21, like that, and make a mark around the entire blank. And this mark is just for reference. We'll, we'll probably end up cutting it in a slightly different place based on how the rest of the shan looks. And I will mark out the tip of the tail. This is a bit of an arbitrary one, but I'll mark just up two millimeters from the bottom there along the back and two millimeters up from the bottom on the other side. And again, fill those marks with some pencil. Now I have all of the reference marks. I can join them up and we can begin to see how the shin is gonna emerge from the piece of wood. So I'll draw from the shoulder to the, to the heel now, and then from the shoulder to the tip of the tail, like that. Again, from the heel to the tip of the tail. And on the other side as well, the exact same marks. The next thing to do is to roughly cut out the tail. So for this, uh, mount the blank in a vise and try to mount it so that, the, that this line here from the shoulder to the heel is parallel to your work surface. Now that'll make it much easier to ensure that you're cutting at a good angle. So I'm gonna cut the side furthest away from the camera first. Uh, and I'm always here. This is just a rough cut, so I'm cutting like just outside the line that I marked. Okay, now I've got pretty close to the shoulder line here. I'm gonna check on the underneath and I can see I'm not quite at the heel line. So I'm gonna cut a little further, this time tilting the saw backwards slightly uh, so that I don't cut for any further forwards here, but I do meet up with the, with the heel line on the bottom and I'm just crouching down now to make sure that I don't go too far. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then the second side. Now we can take the rest of the material off, again cutting just outside of the line, especially here down at the heel. Now we have this rough looking heel. The shoulder's a bit uneven, but that doesn't matter. We can clean that up later. So we can take the chisel and here, just start cutting down the tail. That'll do for the moment. And on the other side, from the bottom, cutting it up like that. So now we can test this roughly cut tail against the slot that we want to fit it into and see that it's just oversized, which is exactly what we want. If it fits in already or is loose by now, then you probably have to just chop this all off and start again. So now you can use either a chisel or a knife or a, or a file even just to slowly reduce the width of the tail here trying to only take off a tiny amount at a time. And keep both sides parallel with each other. And we can see that the tail now just fits in the slot with a little bit of resistance. So I will clean that up later with a, with a file 
and we, we can treat the tail as fitting for the moment. So the next part of the process is to shape the, the body of the Xi'an, and in order to make that easier, to give us a bit of a reference point, we make a partial cut here at the front of the Xi'an on both sides, going maybe a... oh, that's actually a bit too much. I would aim for a, about a third of the way in. The reason we do this, and the reason we've been building this all on top of the blank, is because it's much easier to carve the body of the Xi'an when we have this big, sturdy bit of wood to hold it in place with. So first, I'm going to make cuts just down the side, like this, with the aim to join up these top lines from the tail and these bottom corners down here. That's pretty close now. Yep, there we go. And on the other side... Okay. So now the slope is looking very good, but the, the foot's looking a bit fat here. So I'm going to now start cutting down like this. And there are various ways of shaping bodies of Xi'ans. Uh, this is just the way that I typically use. It's nice and simple, produces clean results, and is easy to adapt into other shapes. So I'll just make a few little adjustments, yeah, like that, and on the other side. So before I make any more cuts now, I want to check some dimensions on the instrument itself. So I'm going to insert the Xi'an into the position we want for it, and then move the string into position, so I take the string away from the wheel, and then slide the string until it just touches the wheel. And that is going to be the position that we make the string slot in. So I'll take my pencil and just mark on either side of this. It's there, one side, and on the other side. So now we know where the notch for the string is going to be. I think in this on this shin, I'm going to put the inside heel of the foot just on just a little backwards from it, like there. So I'll mark that onto the bottom like this. Doesn't have to be particularly precise. And then just saw into it just a few millimeters. It's very easy to to make this cut too deep. So really only cut a few millimeters in. So now I'm going to slowly cut a wedge shape out of the Xi'an to join up this cut that we made here back to the heel. And at this point it's very, very easy to put too much pressure on the tool, push forward and cut off the foot as well. You don't want to do that, um, so I would start by making very small cuts here at the front. And now when we push forwards, there's a much larger amount of material resisting the, the blade, so it's much harder to cut the foot off. But as always, make very small cuts and just slowly bring the cut back. I think this chisel isn't quite as sharp as it should be. Okay, so now I've brought the cut back to just in front of the heel here, and I don't want to take it all the way back. I want to leave a, a very small, maybe just under one millimeter surface here. So we'll get rid of the waste there with a knife. And there we go. Now I'm going to lightly sand the surfaces with 320 grit sandpaper. This isn't at all necessary, it just gives the surface a bit of a nicer finish. So 
So now that we've finished carving the shape of the Xi'an, we can test the fit again. And we can see that now the tail fits nice and loosely into the, into the slot. I think we'll need a tiny bit of adjustment later, but that's fine for now. And the other thing to look for is here that the heel is lining up on both sides. Now I'm not entirely happy with it. You can see here, it seems like on this side, the heel is angled away very slightly. So what I'm going to do is just make little cuts like that. Just going very slightly inwards from the tips of the heel there. And on the other side, and I'm making sure now not to cut the tip off because I don't want to change the, the, the overall layout of the heel. I'm just cutting a slight angle inwards. Then we check that fit again. Yeah, now I'm much happier with it. It will need a bit of adjustment later, but for, for this stage in the process it's fine. We can find the point at which the, the string should sit again. So now we can cut the Xi'an off the blank here. And to do that I'm just going to put it in the bench vise, uh, put the saw just a little bit inwards from the foot so we have a slight foot angle, and just cut down at a slight angle. Yeah, now this is ready. We just need to tidy up the front of the foot a little bit here. You can do that however you like. I usually just rub it along a piece of sandpaper like this. And take the burr off the sides like that. So let's test the fit again. I'm not entirely happy with the fit of the tail here. It's just a little bit too tight. It really, it needs to be snug, but it also needs to be able to move. And in this kind of fitting, it's really important to make very small cuts and then test after every cut. Okay, it's still a little tight. So I'll take another cut off the other side to balance out the material being taken away. Test it again. Still a little tight. Okay, now I think I'm happy with it. It grips a tiny bit there, but I'm going to wait until testing it to see if that causes problems before taking any more away. Otherwise, that's a very nice fit, I think. So to cut the notch for the string, I'm going to take a knife. You can also do this with a file, but I like to do it with a knife. Make a slight incision there, just in front of the back line of the I made for the string position, and then take an angled cut in towards that, like that, which will cut a little wedge away. And I want it a little bit deeper than that for this string. We can always make this deeper later as well. So I'm going to cut in again, and yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Before we do the final fitting of the Xi'an, we want to make sure that the heel line here and the foot are on the same plane with each other, which at this point in the process might not necessarily be the case. So the easiest way to do this is to put down a piece of 320 grit sandpaper on a flat surface, place the Xi'an on it, and just gently slide it backwards and forwards. Try to put a little bit more pressure on, on the foot than the heel, just because there's more material there so it doesn't get worn away so quickly. And just a few strokes will do. And now we have a, a Xi'an which sits very snugly on the foot and along the heel there. We can test that out on this flat surface, just feeling that it doesn't rock, except for very precisely on the heel line. So a little bonus tip here, which isn't entirely related to making Xi'ans, but for making the adjustment thread, which I need to do now in order to get this one working. So I take some, take some thread, always take way more than you think you need. Cut it off. So I'm going to get the two ends of the thread and kind of push them together like that. They should stick together quite nicely. Then I will take some super glue and just 
put a little drop of super glue onto the end. Now I'm going to just gently push the two threads together with my hand and then leave that to cure for a few seconds. And now we have this stiffened thread. We can attach it to the trumpet string as usual by looping it through, pulling it tight, and then threading the stiff end through the hole in the adjustment peg. And there we go. So now we can get this string tuned up and see if the Xi'an works. And it buzzes, but it's not responding particularly well at the moment. Okay, so the first thing to do to fix the response of Xi'an is to make sure that the foot lines up with the, with the tapping plate. So the easiest way to line up the bottom of the foot with its tapping plate is to put everything in position put a piece of 320 grit sandpaper underneath and then just slide it around and you can see a little bit of dust building up on the front of the foot there so let's clear the dust away and try it like that see if that improved anything Yeah, the sound is a little bit better, but the response still needs fixing. So let's adjust the tail first. So after a few more adjustments, making the tail fit a little bit better, you can see now it slides in and out very cleanly. Uh, I adjusted the foot slightly as well by sliding sandpaper underneath and sliding it, and also just slightly adjusted the string slot here. And now I'm quite happy with the results. And once you've got the basics down, there are endless adjustments you can do to try tweaking the, and fine-tuning the sound of the Xi'an. And these adjustments have as much to do with the surroundings of the Xi'an as the Xi'ans themselves. One trick, for example, is to stick a coin on the soundboard around the buzzing bridges, and the weight of the coin and the exact position can subtly change the sound. The properties of the string adjust the sound, the properties of really everything around the Xi'ans adjust the sound. So now you know this method for reliably constructing well-functioning Xi'ans, it's up to you to tweak them and see what kind of results you can get.